All right, I want you to meet a few people here. Gary Thompson, he's a uh, doctor. He's a uh, director of the Clinical Training Center at the Early Life uh, Child Psychology and Education Center. Uh, activist and retired teacher, Lisa Harris, and returning to the show, uh, Emmett McGrory. He is an attorney with the American Principles Project. So um, let me um, start, and I'd like to just have an open discussion like we've had before here on the program on, on Common Core, and that is, um, uh, the worst thing that you're finding about the data mining. You actually thought this was a conspiracy theory. I did. I, I, I really did. In fact, yeah. I thought all of your shows were conspiracy theories. Right. I've never watched one. Right, okay. Um, so when you hear about this, when you heard about this, you're like, oh, geez, another Glenn Beck conspiracy, but then you start <laughs> looking into it. I looked at the exact documents that you uh, discussed in full during your monologue. And? Uh, it was scary. It wasn't a... Wasn't a conspiracy theory yeah. at all and it, am I overstating it because I think this is the scariest thing we have found yet this is this is like some really spooky sci-fi Gattaca kind of thing isn't it? it it's pretty freaky yeah worst thing anybody want to go on this before we start or I mean why are let's go here why are they data mining like this make the case because people say oh why are they doing that they're just trying to help education get a little better that's what they're doing i, I think you hit the the nail on the head in in your monologue this this is about a progressive agenda which at the at the root of it uh means uh we're talking about people who don't have faith in the american people they don't have faith in the american people to lead their own lives make their own decisions so why do you need to do this? Well, you need to manage society. You need to manage education. You need to manage the workforce. And, and really, I mean, a really uh, benign example of this that's already there, and it's very simple, is the PSATs. To where you take a PSAT and you take it early and you're like, oh, you know what, that, has, that kid has, we should watch that kid. And so they start getting letters from the good universities and everything else early, and so you're watching it. This is something that is really kind of insidious. I mean, right at the beginning, they're evaluating and they're saying, you're a cog, you're over here. Ooh, you might be this designer, right? Right. Ha Go ahead. What I see is instead of children being encouraged to excel to the highest that they can, they're putting them in a place to where instead of it's a child choosing a career and going after their interest, they're letting the career choose the child or the workforce choose the child and tracking them all along the way to slot them into whatever workforce needs are. Okay, so um, are, are, you, are you three convinced that that's really what this is? That this is just to feed the beast of, of what society needs as a collective, to train the kids the best way and slot them into the best things is that what this is I don't know the end game but you, you've had I, some I great that, comments that's on it. true but when you talk about slotting children in you know in, in a managed society managed economy you also concern yourself with with uh, how they're going to um, manage their interrelations with other people uh, that becomes part of the game well we need we need uh, worker bees, we need cogs in the machine, in the machine uh, and that's going to be a different personality type, for instance, than your entrepreneur. Okay, so what is the, pro well, I mean, I, mean I, I think there's a double standard here. Um, you know, we're all supposed to be born equal and then make our own way and have an equal chance, but, I mean, is that the double standard? Is that, I mean, because it seems to me that there's a, a double standard that we don't, you don't really get an equal chance. You're born, you're born free, and, and in your life, it's, it's like a, an artist with a canvas. That's your canvas, and, and you're, you're there to make that masterpiece. And it should be you doing it, not the state. What is predictive testing? Well, in essence, it's neuropsychological testing is what the school districts are proposing to do uh, throughout the country. Uh, there's, there's a reason why my wife and I don't have many friends in our small Utah town because we've tested half the community's children. And the, reason we don't, and the reason we don't have friends is because we have access to extensive data about these children and their families. And, you know, we, we have to be subjected to strict privacy laws. And with this, this information comes power. And... 
and to keep from people like us from abusing that power, we are subjected to these strict uh, uh, privacy laws as well as uh, you know state state governing laws uh, in regards to uh, being clinical psychologists. So it, it's the power differential, and so we have to back off from these families. When you take this type of information and you put it in the hands of someone who is not trained, uh, you're, you're having uh, kindergarten teachers and second grade teachers uh, basically performing neuropsychological examinations and they're not trained with the privacy issues, they're not trained with interpreting uh, results. Like what can you interpret from this information? I mean, what, what, what they show me something that you could gather the information and you could interpret one thing, but it actually means something else. Can you give me a kind of an example? Uh, I mean, like what, what is, I'm a teacher, what am I going to see? What kind of information am I going to see that I could take and I could use it against? I'm trying to play the devil's advocate here on, because people are going to say, oh, guys, you're just overreacting. It's no big deal. After a 45-page evaluation of this, um, it, it, it is just so strong in terms of its predictive abilities, in terms of personality, uh, cognitive styles, uh, be behavioral styles. Um, I, I can. So is this is this kind of like almost like Minority Report, to where they're saying predictive testing means I can say pretty much what you are going to do in life, so you're, I categorize you as worth it or not worth it right now. We're getting to that point in uh, clinical psychology and neurology uh, and, and medicine, but we are truly getting to that point uh, where we can predict in, in that manner. 